Hello friends, welcome to my lab. In this video, I will show you the identification of different parts of a three-phase squirrel cage induction motor and their functions and the materials of it. If you love my video, please like it and don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends. Let's switch on. So you can see, I have already dismantled the parts of a three-phase squirrel cage induction motor and first of all, we will see the outer part of the induction motor that is the nameplate and the nameplate is riveted on the surface of the yoke it shows the full details of the motor first of all you can see the name of the manufacturer that is tech track then you can see the punching is semi open type that means the enclosure of the motor is semi open type horsepower rating that means output power is 2 horsepower type is 3 phase induction motor rpm that means speed is 1440 rpm and it is the full load speed next the kilowatt or kv rating of the motor is null that means it is not a power generating machine so it will be vacant the full load current is in ampere that is 1.5 ampere the full load voltage across the motor is 400 volt across the windings and the cycle that means frequency is 50 hertz three phase machine and the insulation class is b that means the winding can be withstand up to 130 degree celsius and the winding is made of of mica glass fiber or asbestos etc then the temperature rise is 45 degree celsius field current is null that means no field current is given to the motor then you can see the model number and it is determined by the manufacturer next the duty cycle of the motor is continuous that means the motor can run continuously next confirming iss that is the is code for a three phase induction motor that is manufactured as per the standards given by bureau of indian standards in 1996 and next part of the motor is the yoke it is a vital part and it is made of cast iron and this is a cut section of the motor so you can see the inner part of the stator core actually it will be covered in this position and you can see the thin laminations are attached together to reduce the eddy current loss of the motor and the main purpose of this yoke is to hold the stator core and three phase winding and you can see the inner portion of the stator core and it is made up of laminated silicon steel the main purpose of the stator core is to hold the three phase windings and the slots are looks like this and you can see there is a piece of paper inserted into the slot of the stator core it is called the nomex paper it is used for insulation for the slots there are total 24 number of slots the number is 24 because the number of phase is 3 and minimum number of pole is 2 multiplication of 3 and 2 is 6 so the minimum number of slot is to be the multiple of 6 that means minimum number of slot should be 6 or 12 or 24 or 48 and so on as the synchronous speed of the motor is 1500 rpm so if the frequency is 50 hertz then the number of poles should be 4 that means in case of three phase and four pole machine the slot per pole per phase is to be 2 i will discuss this in my another video next you can see the vital part of the motor that is the winding here three different winding is used for three different phases the material of the winding is copper or aluminium with class b insulation mainly the purpose of the winding is to produce uniform rotating magnetic field that will rotate throughout the stator core at synchronous speed now you can see some blade like structure is elevated on the surface of the yoke and this is called the cooling fins it is used to increase the surface area of the yoke for cooling purpose by circulating air and it is casted with yoke at the same time next you can see the vital part of the motor that is the rotor part mainly the mechanical load is to be connected with the shaft of this rotor it consists of the rotor core that is of laminated silicon steel and the purpose of the rotor core is to hold the aluminium bars in skewed position to reduce the magnetic locking or cogging of the induction motor the main purpose of the rotor bars is to produce rotor emf and current and field and bf likes a short circuited secondary winding this type of motor is called the squirrel cage rotor because if we remove the rotor core from this motor and only these end rings and aluminium bars are hold in position then it looks like a cage and in previous years of germany the squirrels are kept in this cage so this is structure is called the squirrel cage rotor 
I have shown the animation how the squirrel cage router is made in my previous video. You can find the link in description. For connecting these aluminium bars, there are two aluminium end rings are connected across the rotor bars like this and this creates a cage like structure and a short circuit path through which the rotor current can easily flow through the rotor and creates the rotor flux and inside the rotor core a carbon steel shaft is inserted the main purpose of the shaft is to couple mechanical load with the rotor and it is placed on the bearings there are two bearings it is used for holding the shaft and rotor inside the stator core the main purpose of the bearing is to help the shaft for rotation of the rotor inside the stator by reducing friction and it is made up of chrome steel you can see there is a slot is made on the surface of the shaft two bearings are fitted in two sides of the shaft and here is one bearing is fitted in the bearing housing and this is called the end cover of the motor and this is mainly a part of the stator and fitted with the yoke and the shaft and rotor part will be placed like this and this end cover will be fitted like this and just like this the rotor is free to rotate inside the stator the main purpose of the end covers is to hold the bearings and to protect the motor by covering the faces and there is a few millimeter air gap between the stator and rotor to reduce the leakage flux and this end cover will be fitted in this position for keeping the motor in a particular position in static condition there is a base and there are four holes on the surface of the base plate for mounting the motor in a particular position and here you can see there is a fan is fitted on the shaft to cool down the motor by forcing the natural air and it is made up of mild steel or aluminium the fan is to be placed on any side of the shaft like this next you can see this is the fan cover of the motor basically it is used to cover this fan and protect the fan like this and this is the terminal box for covering the terminals of the three phase windings and you can see there are three terminals are coming out from the windings this motor is connected in delta so there are only three terminals is fitted on the porcelain kit and it is placed in this position and this terminal box will cover the terminals like this and from this hole the cables will be coming out now you can see there are some nut and bolts are here this is for fitting the end covers and terminal box with the yoke or main motor parts this is made up of mild steel and some rivets are also used for holding the nut and bolts in particular position so you can see all parts of a three phase squirrel cage induction motor in case of a high horsepower induction motor the accessories will be also larger in size i have used this adjustable range and 9 by 11 open ended spanner for dismantling this three phase induction motor I have given the full details of this motor and the theory portion of this motor in my website. You can find the link in description or visit the website www.electricalnotebook.com. For more videos like this, please do like, share and do your valuable comments and subscribe if you find these videos helpful. Till then, stay tuned with us. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat.